Y'all, welcome back to Kentucky Fried Wargaming, where two guys who aren't qualified to talk about anything decide to talk about a game with hard math and chance. I'm Joe. And I'm John. And we're excited for this episode, because this one's topical, John. We're not just speaking about gen general things. No, no, no. And in some places, tropical. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess that's technically true. Because um, it's hot orc summer, John. It is hot orcs. And there is no board more shorts, tropical place. Board shorts, PBRs, tank tops, whole nine yards. Crack it open a cold one with all the boys. Written with a Z. Um, because for people out there who may not know, uh, the 40k orcs are about to get a new codex. And it looks like a ball of manic insanity wrapped up in a... a whole bunch of fun and delivered to us on a bunch of pages and i am just terribly excited about the book uh, as is john and our buddy tanner out there i am sure is already screaming wah into uh his speakers listening to this and we'll do a full video on the book when it comes out and why we like it and maybe we'll get tanner on here to talk about why he likes it because he's a long time war boss but for now uh, we wanted to kind of talk about something that we've been excited about and that what we're like, because it seems like people seem to enjoy, you know, when we're talking about something we enjoy. And John, there's nothing we like more than these orcs. Just so goofy. I mean, there are things I like more than these orcs, but I do have the softest of soft spots for the orcs in 40k. They're just so dumb. They just want to have fun, John. They're us. Yes. We are the They're orcs. They're the most dumb. <laughs> yes. Aspire to be anything? No, sorry. Aspire only to be an orc in 40k. <laughs> There's no don't, You don't want to be anything else. <laughs> just an orc. I just want to be an orc boy here to have a good time with the lads. Okay? That's all I want. So in this episode, we thought we'd uh, take some time to break down why they are so fun, why they are unique in the setting of 40k, and what sort of interesting tidbits make them a great army to collect on the tabletop. Not so much the rules mechanically, which, you know, we'll save it for another video, but in general. However, first, hobby progress in games played. Alright, John. Uh, hobby progress, games played. Uh, what have you been up to over the past week? Uh, I wrote a Skaven list for our big bash party of Age of Sigmar, and that's about all the hobby I've been able to do. Been uh, busy working overtime at work and uh, just been busy with life stuff. Mm -hmm. So I haven't had the ability to really dig into hobby like I want to, but I have sat down to like do some list building before we play our big weekend. And I'm hoping as things calm down, I can get just chugging back in to painting, get back to painting multiple nights a week, multiple hours a week. It'd be great. That sounds awesome. What about you? What have you been doing? <sighs> I'm in a similar boat to you. Um, we're getting ready to close on our house in a week. And uh, everything's getting very real incredibly fast. So uh, I have also been busy trying to pack. Uh, you know, getting ready to actually do the move. So I haven't done a lot of hobby. I did get to do one day of hobby. Uh, I did uh, most... Uh, of, I can't say the whole day, but a vast majority of the day I hobbied. Uh, broke out the ogres, got some uh, riders for Mornfang, primed and magnetized, and uh, got some flesh tones done. I'm not very good, at, well, I should say, I'm kind of scared about flesh tones, but I found some recipes I liked. So I'm doing uh, some flesh tones on these ogres. I got those done in a variety of tones, which I like, because I don't like an army that has just like one skin tone across the whole thing. Um, so that took a little bit of time, had to work with the recipes, make my own washes. It was, it was fun. Um, but most of what I've been doing is honestly packing up my hobby stuff at the apartment. Uh, you know, going through it piece by piece, getting rid of stuff that I don't need to clip into bits anymore, downsizing, reorganizing, and then packing it all into boxes, which was quite a task. 
John, quite a task. Yes, I can imagine. Um, I actually don't have as much as I thought I would, if I'm being honest, which I'm, you know, I'm happy about, but there's still, uh, quite a bit that I have to move and I have to move it safely because I don't want to break it all in the move, but I'll figure something out. Um, I also found a buyer for my Tyranids, which was awesome. Went through and priced those out piece by piece to get a total of what they're worth. Uh, answer, worth mo quite a bit more than I was expecting. <laughs> um. So oh, I'm going to sell those to my buddy bees and, uh, and then I'm going to take that money to start painting these orcs uh, for 40k when I move into the new house in September. Going to hit the ground running in hobby when I get to the new hobby room. Kind of keep the motivation running. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, you know, at least here in the U.S. we were seeing a resurgence of COVID, but both of us are vaccinated. So we're still going to try to play games together. Yeah. And uh, there's just have a grand time. Yeah, there's a whole lot of talk about whether we'll lock down or not. And that there's valid conversation to be had here in the U.S. I know we're in uh, looking at our podcast analytics. We're in like over 20 countries. So, hey, y'all. Uh, but here in the U.S., it is a bit of a shit show. So there may be a lockdown. But the difference between this time and last time is that before none of us were vaccinated in the friend group because there was no vaccine at the time, of course. So we couldn't hang out or anything like that. We went uh, a over a year without hanging out and seeing one another, really. Um, however, this time, uh, if, even if we do lock down, it looks like vaccinated folks will still be able to see vaccinated folks. So John and I can just spend a whole winter hobbying and playing games indoors, which honestly, that don't sound too bad. No, uh, but you are forgetting the one thing that we did do during quarantine. We met halfway at a McDonald's parking lot and traded, I traded you chicken nuggets and you gave me the Indominus box in a like movie style <laughs> yes. trade off. In a socially distanced, large drug drop off of way. You know, you walk halfway across the parking lot, I place the goods, I back up, you come forward and get the goods, you drop the nugs, back away, I come up and get the nugs, we nod really cool like from across the way. And then we get back to our cars. Um, Walk slowly, take a drag off a cigarette, flick it into the par back of the parking lot as an explosion goes <laughs> yeah, off. Cigarette hits a gas can, explosions occur, eagles <laughs> scream. They actually sound like red tail hawks. It's very cool. Yeah. Step into a Toyota Camry. <laughs> <laughs> that red tail hawk joke is going to make one person laugh. And for that person out there who got it, you're my bud. You're very cool. It's, it's, it's uh, it's a joke for you. Yeah, that one's for me. Um, yeah, so this time around, we won't have to be so isolated from each other. So even if we do lock down, uh, we'll still get some games in. We'll still get some hobby rolling. Uh, it'll just maybe be a little different. But uh, as we find stuff out, we'll, we'll keep y'all updated. And hopefully, it really is just that the green tide is coming, and I'm going to make some works. And on that note, John, on to the topic. Okay, so John, 40k orcs. Yes. Before we talk about why they're fun, I think we have to talk about what in the hell they are. They are... Because they do just kind of look like green dum-dums. They are, in fact, giant green dum-dums. Okay, so I'm glad they are they're... fungus It's what's based on the tin. ...organisms. Yes, it's on the tin. Fungus-based organisms whom entire society is built around might is right. But not in the weird, like, fascist kind of way. In the more they only understand violence as a language kind of way. They live for fighting and scrapping and, and everything. It's not out of cruelty. It's not out of, like, a sense of superiority. It is out of a sense of that's just what they live for. They live for fighting. When they can't fight other things, they fight each other. When they can't fight each other, they fight rocks i think i don't know they find something to fight yeah they don't know how to exist without fighting yeah they are a society and a being who must fight in fact they actually are essentially immortal uh, like they don't die of old age they really only die through violence and the older they are and the more fighting they do the bigger they get so like generally speaking if you picture in your head a human you, you know average height is what like five eight to a six foot for a human somewhere in there you know you have some 
people who are taller, for sure, uh, and some that are shorter, but, you know, most people are going to hit a certain size, and they're never going to get taller than that in their life. In fact, we shrink a little. Not the orcs. They'll just keep growing and growing and growing with every head they bash until eventually they're, you know, Godzilla stomping around the city. Yes. <laughs> um, because that is their biological need. And they will take it out on each other or other people around them. Um, and the orcs are an interesting species because they are, is the way I have heard it described the best, idiot savants. Yes. They are, they're very dumb, but the stuff still works. Mostly out of their innate psychic ability, making it work. Um, but they also are easily described as a force of nature, less like a constructed society. Like there is no empire of orcs spanning the entire galaxy. They just all kind of have a mutual understanding between their separate tribes. And when they see each other, if there's something else to fight, they work together to fight that thing. And then they can fight each other afterwards. But always, like, you know, green together, fight human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, they have reached a weird sense of uh, nirvana or acceptance with their life. Uh, you will never find an orc that is struggling with uh, depression or self-identity issues or uh, existential crises or any of the stuff that uh, humans, for example, are prone to. Uh, that will never happen for an orc because they are such simple creatures that as long as there's a fight to be had, it's, you know, as they call it, some crumping to be done. They're having a great day. Couldn't be happier. And that makes them a terrifying foe to fight. Because generally speaking, you're not going to make them fear for their own life. Uh, you're not going to make them reconsider their tactics because it might take a large toll on their forces. Uh, and you're not going to reason with their leaders, really, because the leaders are here to crush you. So if an orc wah kind of sets its sights on something, the only thing you could do is try to kill it. And kill it fast. Yes, and because they are spores, like, they do not have sex to reproduce. Mm-hmm. Uh, they reproduce as, like, spores. So in order to get rid of an orc infestation on a planet requires a herculean effort Yeah. by the people of that planet. And more often than not, they fail, and the orcs just go into, like, a remission and then pop back up in, like, the jungles or in, like, the deep woods or something as, like, a feral tribe. And then eventually they continue to slowly gain technology based off of the planet that they're on. So, like, if they're on a feudal planet, they will cap out at, like, feudal-level technology because they only adopt other technology around. But if they're on, like, a big hive world, their technology is going to continuously improve to try to match that technology in the orky way, which is, you know, Mad Maxian slap-together scrap. A whole bunch of monkey see as monkey do. Um Yes. Yeah, they, I, it is interesting that there are species of sort of asexual funguses. Um, you know, there's no need to breed. There's no need to mate. There's no need to have relationships. They simply reproduce by existing and orcs will appear. And God, what a nightmare to try to get rid of. Yeah. Um, and I think the technology piece is uh, the last bit I want to hit on because I think it is uh, a lot of what we just said is goofy and fun. You know, a bunch of lads who are just laughing as machine guns cut into their ranks is already kind of goofy. Um, however, there is one piece that is really funny until you think about the implications. So, the orcs do make their own technology, and they do sort of ramp up to whatever's around them. Whatever they see, they will kind of imitate. And the more orcs that are nearby... One of their, uh, what they call mech boys, essentially the brain boy who is smart and does the thinkies. Um, the more orcs around him, the smarter he becomes because of their presence. And if there's technology for him to imitate, he will. And they won't necessarily do it with any sort of engineering logic. So what, yes. what I mean by that is, let's say... The orcs are on a planet, and they are currently throwing rocks at you. And they see you hold up a rifle 
pull the trigger and blast one of the other one of their buddies away. They'll probably go, "Wow." And then 2 days later, they will come back with two pieces of metal and one piece of wood that they have like taped together with no barrel, there's no chamber, there's no firing pin, there's no ejector. None of the stuff that makes a gun work as a gun is there. However, that orc will raise it, aim it, and pull his little non-existent trigger, and it will go bang, and it will fire around. Because whatever the orcs believe to be true can become true. Uh, they are all latent psychers. Every one of them. But not quite in the way that we're used to, you know? Like... Uh, John, well, technically, like humans are latent psychers in the 40k setting. Yeah, all all humans are. They register in the warp. Um, the thing with orcs is that they have like a psychic manipulation of the materium, and there's many theories out there for you know why and how. Um, the prevailing theory is that they were originally created by the old ones as a worker and war race for the sake of having wars and doing manual labor. And they purposely made them less, how do you put it? Um, they made them less existential and conscious about things and much sim more simple-minded so that they were didn't understand cruelty. They themselves would not be cruel and the they would not experience the feeling of someone being cruel to them. And so that is why they don't like they laugh in the face of violence that other people see as objectively horrifying uh and their psychic ability comes from the old ones giving them that psychic ability so that they can perform that job better yeah which so for an example let's say you are an orc boy and you're in uh, a truck which is essentially like you know it is a truck with a flatbed that you're all standing in with your guns and yeah, it's a it's a Toyota Tacoma or like a Chevy Silverado. Uh, yeah, a Tacoma because they're unkillable. So you're in your taco, right? And you're driving down the hill with your boys, and your boss is up at the front Dude, firing hurts. the machine gun, and the machine gun stops firing. It clicks. Well, it's a bunch of metal hammered together, but yeah, the machine gun. Um, it clicks and the bullets stop coming, and maybe one of you go, "Hey, boss, you forgot the ammo back at base. You don't have any bullets." And then the boss goes, no, I definitely put bullets in here. When the boss says that, if everyone in the truck subconsciously agrees, yeah, the boss probably did put bullets in there, the gun will start firing again. There are no bullets that he put in there. He just thinks he did, and you think he does, so now it has them. And or uh, the, const the, the big you know joke everyone has of, like, they paint their trucks red. Well, why do they paint their trucks red? Because red's the fast color. Yeah, it's the fastest color. If you paint something red, it goes faster. And then they do it, and it does go faster. It just does. Just does. If you, a human, picked up that same red paint and put it on your vehicle thinking it would go faster, it won't. Because you're not an orc. But if an orc picked well, it up... Well, it could. <laughs> If that if those orcs see it, observe it, and go that that chimera is going faster Man, that because it's red fast. now, <laughs> it will go very fast. <laughs> I saw it has the 350Z emblem on it. Ooh, yeah. Um, uh, that's really fun. It's so so fun. So uh, we'll talk it's about bananas. This. Is what it is. It is. It's absolutely bananas, and it's so goofy. But I want y'all to take a moment to think about that. I just want to kind of take what we've talked about and I want to put it together because it's all funny. It's like, it's all chuckles when you think about it in pieces because man, they're just fun. They're just here to have a good time. And they are, except their good time is a war and they're coming in the millions and they don't need to reproduce. They can eat almost anything, including rocks. Uh, and don't forget that the bigger the fight go is and the longer the fight goes on, the more of them show up from other planets. And also, the ones that are there fighting get bigger. And normally you would try to, like, cut off their supply lines, but they don't actually need supplies to accomplish that war. And 
You can't take them out through psychological warfare because they just don't care. So you can't outmaneuver them on logistics. You can't beat them on the psychological level. And they come in numbers that you can't really cut down because they are reproducing just naturally, almost as fast as you could kill them. And, and all of that makes them a horrifying foe to fight because there's almost nothing you can do to stop them unless you have just enough raw firepower to cut them down. And that's hard to do because orc physiology is such that they're really difficult to kill. Um, as well, we the... mentioned, they're kind of like fungus, like walking around fungus with like tough hide, but they don't really have the internal organs that like a person does. Um, so normally like, you know, if, you know, if John got shot and it nicked his kidney, John's having an awful day. John might not be dead, but John is out of the fight for a long time. Sorry, John, you're wounded for this analogy. If you did the same thing to an orc, there are no real internal organs for you to hit. All you did was put a hole in him. It doesn't matter. because He's just going to keep coming. And let's say you do something grievous. Absolutely fatal. Let's say you take like a chainsaw or a chain sword and you take the orc's head. Clean off the body. Head one way, body other way. That orc will drop. However, if someone simply puts his head back on, he will wake back up. Yep. He'll just wake up. He's fine. So all of the orcs that you uh, downed during the assault that you're repelling, hell, half might just get up. Someone will ram a piece of metal on their arm, call it a prosthetic, and now it works. It's nightmarish. <laughs> but there are some off. weaknesses to the orcs, though. Like, they are fairly easy to fool and trick. They are dumb. Uh, Big dumb. Has been done many a time in the setting. <laughs> but they also, their own latent psychic ability can sometimes be their own downfall. Um, again, one of the bigger theories is that, like, the story of Yarek in the War for Armageddon. That he becomes this terror for the orcs, right? He becomes the, the one... The, the red eye, Humi. Yeah. Uh, who He has a las gun for an eye because he loses an eye and replaces it with a las gun. Well, augment. we should say Yark is a commissar. He's Yes, he's a commissar. He's essentially a, a general who was defending a hive city from orcs and got real good yes. at it. Was retired. Let's not forget, he's an old man when this happens. Mm -hmm. um, he has a las gun for an eye now, and he gets a power claw, like the big chompy bit that a lot of, a lot of orc models have. Attaches it as a prosthetic on his arm and fights Gazgul Thraka. Wounds Gazgul Thraka. And because the orcs fear him, watch this happen. And they all of them believe at the same time. Wog over. Fight. Fight in time. Over. Fight in time. Dunsey. And so they all leave. <laughs> yeah. Like they all get scared and leave because they believe that Yarik is the like the the one Umi who, who can kill them. Yeah, the red eye. Yeah. Um, the red eye. And I will say it happened because Yarick was smart enough to learn orc culture. He understood them as a species. He really he didn't just try to kill his enemy. He learned his enemy. And he took actions to become a legend in their eyes. Um the way he got the prosthetic was he was going toe to toe with a war boss at a battle. And the war boss uh like grabbed him with a mechanical claw and crushed and his arm was torn clean off and while the blood was flowing and the arm was about to hit the ground Yarick, in a moment of incredible willpower takes his power sword and beheads the orc war boss without falling and all of the orcs see it happen they watch it happen and they realize Yark, big war boss oh wow and, you know, all the orcs run, and he stands for just long enough before they turn around, and he passes out from blood loss. And that's the power claw he picked up. He picked that war boss's power claw up and had it attached. Not because it was useful for him, not because it made his day-to-day -day easier, 
but because he knew by using the symbol of his victory, he could further his legend in the mind of the orcs and break them more easily. And I will say, Commissar Yarik probably should have been dead by now by old age. But he's not. Yep. You know why? The, because the orcs won't let him. Yeah, the orcs think he's an unkillable war boss. And their belief seems to be keeping him alive. Like, my favorite, just absurd, absurd theory about orcs is the best one, in my opinion, is that the emperor on the golden throne is only still alive because the orcs don't want to let him die <laughs> because they like fighting humans so much. Uh, they do think he is a great war boss. <laughs> exactly like they he cannot die because the then the orcs can't have fun they don't understand uh his motivations like you know why does he have all of his boys do this stupid stuff like praying and making stuff like they should just do more fighting i don't know he seems like a good war boss but kind of stupid <laughs> 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 they just don't get it uh and with that simplicity they are perfectly adapted to the setting. And uh, I think that's why the term idiot savant sticks so well. That they are absolute buffoons and all the better for it. Um, and I think it also leads to why they're so fun as an army. Uh, generally speaking, if you talk to people out in the community, uh, like orc players and salamanders players are some of the more fun folks into the game to play against because those armies generally draw either one nicer people or two people who just want to have fun in the case of the orcs and that is really worth something um this sort of zany wacky uh theme that the orcs have translates really well into the tabletop and people who listen to all of these stories and go they just sound neat uh you're right they are neat, and you will like them on the table. In fact, they're so neat that even Korn himself, the god of chaos, really, really likes them. Um, it's true, he does. He, he, he adores the little orc men. He does! Um, like, one of the my favorite stories from the community is that a bunch of orcs were looking for a fight, and they didn't have a fight, and they looked up into the sky, and they saw a portal to the realm of chaos up in space, and they went, I bet we could find a fight in there. And so they built a spaceship, they loaded all the boys on it, they flew off of the planet, they hurtled themselves with no Geller field of any kind through the portal, uh, demons attacked the ship, they rejoiced, and eventually they landed on a planet that was corn from top to bottom. It was corn's planet everywhere, he had fully owned it, it is a world of blood. And then crash land and probably lose half the orcs on impact, but that's fine, because they're orcs, whatever. And the rest of the lads hop off the ship, and they see a, an absolute vast horde of corn demons. Blood letters and blood thirsters and blood crushers, all ready to chop them to bits. And the orcs smiled. <laughs> they charged forward towards the enemy, they hacked them to pieces, they crushed them, they splintered them, and in the end, were overwhelmed and died. And Korn was so amused with these little creatures that he was pretty sure he didn't make, but they seem awfully like his, um, that he essentially rolled back time for them, and resurrected them, and let them fight again. And again. And again. And again. And, they're and again. And they're still fighting. And again. Somewhere in the warp, there is just a planet of demons and a handful of orcs that are all happier than pigs and shit. And they are just getting resurrected by Kord because they're having a great time and they're fun to watch. Um, I imagine it's kind of like Korn's fish tank. He just sort of strolls by it every now and then, wistfully running his fingers along the glass before going back to whatever he's doing. <laughs> the orcs are his little goldfish. Yes, he likes them. They're dumber than a box of rocks, but he just likes them, okay? He likes having them around. They relieve some stress. He's got a lot going on. Um, and I think it, it translates really well to the tabletop. I mean, John, generally speaking, what makes orcs a fun army to collect? So I'll tackle it from 
playing on the table side. And we're not going to get into like specific rules or dig super deep into it because the codex is coming out soon for ninth edition and we'll cover it in there. But I'm talking generalities, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The game is all about lots of boys and lots of toys. Either either or or a mixture of the two. Yep, you could that's it. Cover the board in a bajillion orc lads. Or you could go with a lot of orc lads and then a bunch of big stuff near them. Whether that yeah. be and it's, motorcycles, trucks, uh giant squigs, like Imperial knight sized machines, all sorts of toys. And it's a predominantly melee faction. Uh has like you can bring a lot of shooting, but the best thing about orcs is that it's just a lot of dice. It's a lot of shots, but they miss most of their shots. The vast majority. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, that's going to happen the... when your gun doesn't have a barrel, I guess. Yeah. Daka, 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 daka. <laughs> you know? It's in, again, we'll touch back in the lore real quick. Um, part of the reason for that is that orcs find shooting guns fun. They don't necessarily hit, like hitting things with the guns. It's actually common for orcs to just shoot at like Imperial Guard emplacements just for the sake of shooting their guns, not because they're trying to hit them. And then they won't hit any guardsmen because they still want to fight them. <laughs> uh, yes, I understand this very well. If ammo wasn't too expensive in the US, I might go do it myself at the range. But alas, I actually need bullets. So jealous yeah. of these green boys. And so on the table, it's a lot of Lots of units that you can kind of just throw away. Like a lot of them you just run forward, you hit stuff with them. They either die in combat, kill stuff in combat, shoot stuff, or die get to shooting. You just throw lots of them. Lots of trucks, lots of boys, lots of characters, lots of motorcycles, lots of battle wagons. You're just constantly pressuring your opponent. They are not they I'm not saying that they're dumb when I say this, but they're not a tactical army. They have tricks. They have things that you can do with them that are a little bit more big brain, but for the most part, they're not doing like Gene Seeler cult shenanigans, right? Mm hmm. I think that's one of their appeals is that they could be played more simple if that's how you want to play them. Uh, or you could tune it up over time as you become a more experienced war boss, but, uh, you know, you get to play. And they also have and... multiple sub factions of orcs, different types of orcs, all crammed into one army. Which I think also increases their uh, their diversity on the tabletop. Whether that be guys on foot, that be uh, orcs on bikes, in trucks, uh, with squigs, uh, sneaky ninja orcs. You, you got a whole lot of options. Yeah, and on top of all of that, like, they have a huge range. Like, if you just like collecting models and you want to pick one army that's going to be a lot of fun to build and collect, Orcs is a really good choice. Because you can... There's, it is probably the second biggest range, I honestly believe. There's the second biggest range of models only to Space Marines in 40k. Mm -hmm. On top of that, there is so much room for conversion, for making your own stuff up, uh, 3D printing, oh, anything yeah. you want to do. We'll get there. Like, it's, there's so much to do with orcs. Uh, they're they're a, a project, for sure. You don't casually play orcs. No, you way. go hard. And I think that's the strength I want to talk about, is that they, if you are someone who really enjoys the idea that you can make your own unique models out of kit bashing or 3D printing or combining bits together that shouldn't from other armies and making your own models, this is the force for you. <laughs> because in lore, obviously, they they steal scrap from anything. Anything. So let's say uh, you want to build an orc with, with uh, an orc Luda, as they call them. They're orcs with, like, big machine guns, and you don't want to pay the price for the Games Workshop kit. That's fine. You have an extra orc boy, and you have five Tau pulse rifles. Great. Glue those pulse rifles together on what on a little piece of sprue that you paint to look like metal. Like this guy is holding up five pulse rifles to fire at once, and you've got a Luda. Congratulations. You just kit bash something. And orcs can do that across the entire army. <laughs> and 
they can do it almost infinitely, uh, depending on your theme or where you want them to be from or how crazy you want to get. I mean, I'm talking, you can go get Tonka trucks and turn them into orc vehicles, and it won't look out of place at all once you prime them and paint them. Uh, it is wild how much you could do with this RV. And if you got a 3D printer, forget about it. Just forget about it. Uh, it could become an incredible hobby army on top of just being like a fun army to play. If you're someone who really wants to get into painting some weird stuff or building some weird stuff, you will have a time and a half with an orc army. And you can do so pretty cheap if you really get into the printing and converting. Um, I, I think that's so fun. However, John, I think we would be remiss if we didn't mention what I would consider the two... I don't know if I'd call, like, negatives, but the two drawbacks of the Force. Um, I think there are two disclaimers. If this yes. sounds like a whole lot of fun, <laughs> we just want you to know these things before you jump in. Yeah, I don't want to um, catch anyone unawares, you know what I mean? Yeah, because nobody likes to get, like, part of the way through a project and realize that it was a much different thing than what you signed up on for. Yeah, fully agreed. Um, so I guess first... If you are going to play orcs, you are going to need a lot of models. A lot of models. I mean, you're going to need, just in orc boys, the basic foot troops, you're probably going to need like 90 orc boys, minimum. And that's not counting <laughs> multiple trucks, that's not counting war bikes, that's not counting mega bosses, that's not counting, uh, you know, super knobs, that's not counting... Uh, battle wagons, the new uh, squig hog riders, or stompas, or big mechs, or the artillery, <laughs> or any of the trucks, the boom blaster wagon, or the snazdaka picturing... wagon, or the snazdaka dragster. Like, there's just... Uh... I'm picturing a big mech slapping the side of a giant battle wagon and going, this hold many orc brother. <laughs> It does. It does. And also, while you've always needed a bunch of models for orcs, that has always been the case. In the new edition of Ninth, stuff is really cheap in points. So if you want to get to like a 2,000 point list, there's going to be a lot of models in it. A whole lot of models in it. And if you're going to get into the army, that's a thing you just kind of got to know going in. And you got to be okay with it. Um, if you're not, totally understand, it could be really daunting to paint that much. However, if you're someone who really likes the army and you really just kind of get goofy with it and enjoy that painting process and get into the mindset of just, hee hee, as long as I'm painting orcs, I'm having a good time, uh, I think it will be fine. But know what you're getting into, because there are some people who, uh, really would avoid that like the plague. And John, I think... I'll let you take the second one, because you've seen this for a long time, but generally speaking, if uh, people out there, let's say they're against kit bashing and 3D printing and converting, man, orcs get expensive fast, don't they? Yeah, that is that is something I will, I will say. If you want to buy everything official GW to play the entire collection, good luck. Oh god, that's You're gonna hurt. Yeah, that's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's one thing to build like a list to go play like at an official GW like tournament, but if you're playing with your buds, you might want to just like go buy a Tonkin truck and slap a bunch of like like forty k stuff on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the ways, and I'll, I'll give some tips to like help with this, is become the orc player in your community. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves an orc player uh, because. One, you they'll give you bits, like ask for bits from the people in your community because you'll be a lot of fun. And then they get to see parts of their armies included in their army. And that can help like make some cool conversions, some different stuff. I mean, I made a Big Mech once out of a uh, Tau crisis suit and a bunch of different guns from all the other factions slapped together on it. So it looked like the world's weirdest mech suit. Yeah. With like an orc head smoking a cigar. Yeah, I mean, I like I know there are people out there who are a little nervous about kit bashing, 
But if you're nervous about kit bashing and you're gonna play and you still really want to play orcs without breaking the bank, it's okay. You're gonna be fine. Just take it slow and try to get okay with it because you're really gonna regret it if you don't at least give that a whirl. The best thing about orcs and kit bashing is if you're unfamiliar or uncomfortable with kit bashing, with orcs, you have so much wiggle room because if it looks a little off or it looks a little weird, that's just more orc flavor. Yeah. I mean, what are they <laughs> going to do? Go, uh, excuse me, Joe, uh, your little boy there is carrying a Tau railgun, and I don't think his body to muscle ratio can carry that large of a weapon. And I'm going to go, ha <laughs> railgun go burr, because... That orc believes he could carry that railgun, so now he could carry that railgun. And that's... Yes. Them's be the brakes. Them's the brakes. And really, I just had an extra railgun, and I didn't want to throw it in the trash. So, um, it works out. You can explain it in the narrative. It's going to look fine on the table, especially with orc schemes. They do really well with rougher, less detail-oriented paint jobs that go harder into weathering. They look wonderful. You can orcify anything that way. And there's a cornucopia of videos on YouTube to help you with it. So if you loved everything we said earlier on and you get to this particular issue and go, oh, man, I don't know. It's going to be okay. You can do it. I believe in you. Just start small and grow it up piece by piece. And you'll get comfortable with converting that way as well. Because you're going to end up with, as you buy like a GW kit and some stuff to convert with, you're going to end up with some leftover stuff from both. And you can kind of get your juices flowing on what maybe you could mash all that stuff into. And um, it will just be fun. And for me, at least, in uh, playing 40k and in, in the hobby, I really just want to have fun. Which is kind of why I was drawn to the orcs. Even though I am also intimidated by all the painting that needs to be done. Um... I think I can do it. I just kind of got to set my mind to it and also move into the new house. So I'm, I'm not super distracted. And I think that's kind of the key for everybody. Yeah, I would agree. But I think that there's more pros than cons to playing an orc army. Uh, fully agreed. And everyone will like you because orc players are fun. Um, just be aware that if you do shout the orc war cry for wah in the middle of a room, it people will cringe. And you're an orc player, so you won't care. So, you know, good for you. You're already uh, approaching Orc Norvana, and I think you're getting real meta with it, and I appreciate that about you. For those out there who are still listening at this point, all the really cool people who are interested in Orcs, I'm going to ask you to do a really, really Orky thing and lead a wah on the like button down below. See that, John? I did a transition. That was... That was smooth. Something, for uh, sure. Some <laughs> John, you're supposed to back me up. Um... But, yeah, we'd appreciate it if you hit like below or if you comment down below. I expect to see Tanner typing wah in the comments of, of right about now. Um, also, for people out there who are having a good time with the podcast, please share it to friends. It's, it's the best way for us to grow at this point. Especially being small, it's hard to get noticed. So every time you share it to somebody, it helps us immensely and we appreciate y'all. And, and if this episode got you in the mood to convert up some orcs or paint up some orcs or anything involving orcs, send us pictures of it on Twitter. Oh, God, I love it. Tag us. Send us stuff on DMs and Instagram. I just want to see it. Like, you don't even have to, like, you can just DM us. You don't have to tag us and boost our numbers or anything like that. You just show us. I just want to see it. <laughs> yeah, we do love a good orc conversion and orc paint jobs are even better. Please send it our way. We'd love to hear from it. We'll keep you all hyped up. And keep the hobby train rolling for you if we can. Because remember, we're all in it together. For now, that's been all of our opinions, though. Bonafide and Kentucky Fried. We'll see you all in the next episode.